Good evening. Um, again, welcome to Together with the Win and Court. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jean Bradley, the Win and Court, and I am one of your city council at large. This evening, it is truly an honor to have um, a second person on my show um, who is someone that I truly admire, not only um, as the superintendent of school in Brooklyn, but also an inspiration to all of us. So it is my greatest honor to welcome our second interviewer, Susan um, Catlin Smith, to our show. Sorry, last week Sorry. we have Susan Bowman. She's a good one. friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> good evening. How are you doing? I'm very good. How are you? Life is good. That's it's so good. good to have you on the show. No, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm pleased to be one of your first guests, and I wish you well. I'm sure you'll do terrific. Thank you so much. I mean, I think you probably so far have an idea in terms of like why do I choose to do, to do this show. Um, you know, my first guest, like I said, was um, Susan Bump. Mm -hmm. and, and as you know, Susan Bump is the first woman ever to be elected um, state auditor. And I believe you are the first ever to be served in, the, in this position as superintendent of school for the Brockton school system. So how do you feel about being the first? You know, I, I think I'm very fortunate uh, to have been brought up by two wonderful parents. I did not grow up with brothers, although my father would have loved having boys. He was a baseball player and wow. loved sports. Yeah. Um, but I was never made to feel, you know, that there wasn't anything that I couldn't do okay. if I worked hard or had passion about it. Mm -hmm. So I first of all, you know, really would like to thank my parents. So in becoming the first female superintendent, mm -hmm. I understood what the role was. Mm -hmm. But in getting there, it never really crossed my mind that it would be a first. I worked for wonderful mm -hmm. male superintendents that really shaped my career, you know, for many years. Mm -hmm. So I'm just proud to be the superintendent of schools in Brockton. Very nice. I mean, how do I put this? I remember vividly the first time I've met you, and I think I was at Brockton High School. Um, although I did not go to Brockton High School, but I've been to Brockton High School for a few times. Um, I approached you. Um, at that time, you didn't even know like who I was, and I mm -hmm. said, "Can I talk to you for a few seconds?" And and I believe during that moment, my English wasn't as it is now. But mm -hmm. you you took the time not only to talk to me, but also to give me some advice in terms of like what you think I should do, going to college, get an education, and stuff like that. Why did you choose to tell me that? Oh boy, it's probably something I've done my whole career. Um, I do believe that our young people, and I very clearly see the future, whether it's a, a little kindergartner, you know, whether it's a middle schooler, a high schooler, I have great faith that our country will continue to thrive just by people like yourself. Thank you. You know, that have an interest and a passion and want to learn more. Mm -hmm. And it's funny to hear you say that because that day when you approached me and we had a conversation, you know, I, I really was very in tune to your story. Mm -hmm. Um, I could relate and only relate because I had read about things that had happened. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly you went through um, some real trauma and came out of it, you know, on top uh, with, again, uh, not only certainly uh, your character and your Thank determination, you. mm -hmm. and that's what I see in young people. Young people want to believe, whether they look at the superintendent of schools, mm -hmm. whether they look at, you know, a teacher, whether they look at the administrative assistant secretary, custodian mm -hmm. in a school, mm -hmm. they want to believe that they can be part of something really good and, and be successful in their lives. You so know, I, I enjoy talking to people. Thank you so much. I mean, how do I put this? Uh, like I already said, my paramount goal with this show truly is to actually educate um, our population, not only about what's going on in the city, but also taking mm -hmm. responsibility because um, I've done a lot of research about you, and I've seen that you, you know, you, 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 you were not just the superintendent. It was a process before you can mm -hmm. actually get there. So can you talk a little bit about that journey? Sure. Um, it's interesting that you bring up Suzanne Bump, because mm -hmm. Suzanne and I both did not grow up in Brockton. Mm -hmm. We met at Cardinal Spellman, which brings um, kids from all over, really, kind of the South Shore. Mm -hmm. And I say that I believe she came from Whitman. I came from Randolph. Mm -hmm. And at the time, they were two very different places from Brockton. Mm -hmm. I found it a vibrant place. You know, it was filled with many different cultures and people. And although things have changed over the years, okay. it was really an exciting place to mm -hmm. be. So 
when I did attend college, and I went to Westfield State College to become a special education teacher at oh, the time. Interesting. Um, the only place I wanted to be was to be a Brockton public school teacher. Mm. So to get that job at age 22 was probably the proudest moment of my life. 22. 22 years wow. old, just out of college. <laughs> you know, started in September of that year, yeah. uh, and those were great years. Okay. You know, I worked in schools that no longer exist. Mm -hmm. I worked in the Keith School, which not the Keith School we presently have, a okay. school that burnt down years ago. Mm -hmm. But I was an elementary teacher. Uh, I was a math coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I went on to work at the Winthrop School, again, a school that is no longer here. It was replaced by the uh, Luis Angelo School mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. on the north side of town. Wonderful families, uh, supportive of their children, you know, mm -hmm. believing that they would have a better tomorrow. I worked as a special education teacher mm -hmm. at uh, East Junior High at the time, now mm -hmm. East Middle School. Yeah. Uh, and I uh, ended up uh, going back to school to get my master's and became a school adjustment counselor. Again, mm -hmm. the district provided me opportunities when I found advancement you know, in education. Interesting. I ended up uh, working uh, with many families uh, and I worked in the court system supporting students as mm -hmm. the adjustment counselor. And from there at age 36, I wanted to go to law school oh. because I felt I could represent the children better than some of the representation I felt they were getting okay. uh, back then. Mm -hmm. uh, that didn't happen. I did go to law school. Mm -hmm. I graduated. Uh, I was very excited. I passed the bar and found myself <laughs> back uh, in the educational yeah. system and had a number of jobs along the way. So it's, it's been a very interesting career uh, in Brockton. I mean, you know, it's like, thank you so much for, for sharing this story with me personally. Um, the reason why I ask you this question is the fact that sometimes people can just see you. They see you as just um, the superintendent of school of Brockton, but I don't think they actually take the time to understand um, what you've been through and the process that mm -hmm. you have to take in order for you to be in that position. And I think that, you know, when a young person, um, you know, find the opportunity to sit down and chat with you in the sense of like, how did you get there? And then you tell them that story. It, it will become a motivation for them to actually mm -hmm. believe that they, they too can be you. They too mm -hmm. can actually follow that process to actually be, um, not just a superintendent, but why not, whatever they want to, to do. Yeah, and I share that story often. One of the things I found my first year as superintendent, and every superintendent does this, you transition into the role. Mm -hmm. And you pretty much go out into the community, you find the things that people like about the school district, mm -hmm. what are the things they want to keep, mm -hmm. what are the things they want to change, you know, what are the things they, that they want you to bring to a district. And I say that because my first year, I spent a lot of time in the community with parents, with community-based organizations, with you know, politicians, with representatives. And I found that the best sessions I had was when I went to the schools and spoke to the okay. students. Mm -hmm. I went to Brockton High, and because of those times in sitting with all different age levels, I continued that right through my first five years. So I still have what's called a luncheon with the superintendent. Mm. I go up to Brockton High, usually it's about 25 from each class. Okay. I don't have anybody else there, mm -hmm. so I have our communications director who actually is there to take notes okay. so that I can have conversation. And you know, the, the only rule is it has to be respectful. Yeah. You know, I don't want to hear any names. You know, <laughs> you can share with me some of your concerns yeah. about things we're not providing, things we are providing, you know, things that you would like to see change for not only yourself but future generations. Mm -hmm. So that is a very important thing. I, for kids to hear mm -hmm. not only your story, mm -hmm. but to believe that you find them to be somebody worthwhile to mm -hmm. listen to mm -hmm. and to you know accept some of the criticism or some of the things since they're there mm -hmm. 180 uh, days in certainly the school year. I mean, thank you. I mean, it's like one of the things that I, I was so excited to ask you is that um, some people can see diversity as a good thing and some people, well, some people can see diversity as a strength. But at the same time, you have other people that see diversity as a weakness. Mm -hmm. Given the school system that we have, especially mm -hmm. in a place like Brockton, what yeah. do you think? Yeah. You know, um, I grew up in, in a home in Randolph, and it's interesting because Randolph has changed. Okay. But it was not a diverse community mm -hmm. at all. My home was very middle class, if you could call it that. My mm -hmm. dad was a firefighter. My mother worked, you know, they worked extra jobs, mm -hmm. uh, everything to, to uh, have a better life, certainly, for my family. Mm -hmm. But I say that because when I came to Brockton, I saw right away, uh, again, kids that were growing up similar to backgrounds I had, mm -hmm. but kids that were also coming from very different backgrounds living mm -hmm. in a city. Mm -hmm. You know, we had poverty at the time. 
we started to have the beginnings of, and I mean just really the beginnings of yeah. English language learners. <laughs> that was few and far between. Okay. So when you come 41 years down the road mm -hmm. and you look at the community as it exists yeah. now, just like the time when I said you and I had that conversation, yeah. I found it fascinating. Mm -hmm. I found it enriching. Mm -hmm. um, it has brought to my family, uh, you know, I think wonderful uh, openings. I just recently had an opportunity with 10 superintendents uh, in a grant okay. that the Taunton superintendent got to visit Portugal. Interesting. You know, to, to go, I'd never been to Europe. Yeah. So to go and see a culture and to understand, you know, certainly the Portuguese population, our Cape Verdean population, mm -hmm. Not very far from there. Yeah. I didn't make it to Cape Verde okay, yet. Okay. But um, it really opened my eyes, yeah. again, to the wonderful things that we see here in yeah. Brockton. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to tell you the fun of when I told you when I came to Brockton as a high schooler, the vibrancy. Mm -hmm. I loved at the time you had the Swedish bakeries. Okay. And you had the Italian section. Mm -hmm. And you had the s section with the Lithuanian bakeries. And the f when I say that, I'm talking the foods and yeah. the culture. I love food, so you're going to get me excited. Well, I mean, it's changed. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a real foodie. Oh, but, I am. you know, but I love when I meet up in people from yeah. different cultures, the Haitian culture, yeah. the Cape Verdean culture, our Spanish culture. Yeah. They want to share not only uh, their traditions, mm -hmm. you know, but also their foods and their special holiday celebrations. Mm -hmm. And I just find that um, such an education for all of our children. Interesting. And when they go out into the world, mm -hmm. the real world, mm -hmm. You know, our kids have had that education. Yeah. You know, my own daughter went to Brockton High School, and when she and both of them, when they when they go out into the world, mm -hmm. they know how to deal with people from all over. Yeah, you know, it's different not, cultures, it's not a big awakening. different ideology. I would assume and stuff like that, because um, you know, in a place like Brockton High School, I mean, why not saying the Brockton public school system? Um, like you just said, we have people from Haiti, we have people from Cape Verde, we have people from Africa, we have people from all over the world. And I think that it's, it's a beautiful thing because, I mean, we not only speak differently, but sometimes we behave differently. But at the end of the day, you can see that it's just one group of people, especially when you have young kids sort of like Mango and stuff like that. Oh, I mean, you just go up to Brockton High. Yeah. And I understand that some cultures or, you know, even you look at soccer. Yeah. You know, there are certain groups that they love soccer or football. Like myself, football. that's what okay, I play, is right? that what, And of course, you know, that's new to us here. And I know I'm probably dating myself. But the reason I say that is, though, you look at the stage yeah. when we put on performances. Yeah. There are students from all over on that stage. Yeah. And they're friends. Yeah. And they're learning about each other. Yeah. And as we look at, and I know we've had conversations, I shared this with the city council, mm -hmm. we start in September the first global study school that I know of yeah. in certainly the wow. state, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, our state. That. So we are bringing three of our dual language programs mm -hmm. together. So you're talking our uh, Juntas program, which mm -hmm. is our Spanish uh, dual language program we've had for a number of years. Okay. Our UNIDOS program, mm -hmm. which is our Portuguese-speaking uh, program that's just in its third year, its infancy, and we're introducing our uh, AMATIA program, mm -hmm. which is our French-speaking program. Yeah. So can you imagine these young people going through school together, some learning English, some, again, learning French together mm -hmm. in all of their content areas. Yeah. Now you go home to somebody's house and English isn't the first language. Yeah. And you're able to understand, you're able to speak that. Yeah. You're able to converse with our businesses, yeah. with the community. And, and I do see that down the road. I don't think it's gonna happen <laughs> overnight. Yeah. But I'm very excited for the Brockton community that we will introduce those languages to many kids and many generations. I mean, I think, I think that, I think it's an amazing thing. So, I mean, giving the community that, that we have. I mean, I personally can tell you that one of my aunt, um, she doesn't know how to speak English. <laughs> and the only way I can talk to her is either I speak French or I speak Creole. So when a student like this student, I'm hoping in the future, um, find somebody like my aunt, let's say that, you know, at the gas station, supermarket, and where my aunt cannot even speak English. Doctors, they will be able, lawyers. Yeah, <laughs> they, they will be able to help to help her out. So it's interesting. So um, I know that you've been doing an excellent job. I can attest to that because I've seen you all over places. That's the best way to put it. So um, what are some challenges that you think we are facing in this mm -hmm. city? And, and what can not just young people, but, but what can parents do to help us out in the sense of like mm -hmm. building, I don't want to call it a better foundation, but building a more stronger school system? Mm -hmm. I think two of the most important areas that we need to pay attention to 
certainly supporting our schools, and this isn't just our city, uh, it's our state, and it's our federal government. Mm -hmm. Because we do have kids from all over. We do have some challenges. Mm -hmm. We have students that come from poverty. We have students that, uh, uh, again, are, are new to our country, are just learning the English language, very, very bright students, yeah. <laughs> but are going to be part of our economy, our yeah. culture, mm -hmm. um, all that we hold dear, certainly, in this country. And I say that because we need to make sure, and I know you've heard me uh, as a city councilor, uh, certainly in the state house, mm -hmm. um, that we need to advocate, and it isn't equal for everybody. It is equity. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by equity in education, and I feel very, very strongly about this, mm -hmm. if we need additional resources in our city, mm -hmm. you know, for children, for whatever reason, whether it's special education, whether it is English language learners, wh whether it is students living in poverty. Mm -hmm. We do an excellent job. Mm -hmm. Our teachers are well trained, but I cannot be fighting a lack of resources mm -hmm. because of money. We mm -hmm. know the resources our children need. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a high stakes test coming in next May mm -hmm. where children in 10th grade are taking that test online. It used to be paper and pencil. And every student, I don't care if you come from Wellesley or Weston or Brockton, mm -hmm. We have paper and pencil, and I guess that would be an even playing field. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about a high stakes test to get your high school diploma, mm -hmm. and it is online, we better make sure we have computers and technology in the hands of our teachers mm -hmm. and our students mm -hmm. from the minute they enter the Brockton Public Schools in preschool, kindergarten, mm -hmm. and beyond. Mm -hmm. So that's a challenge for us. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge when you have a difficult budget. If you look at some of our school buildings, mm -hmm. we were fortunate in the past 15 years to build, I believe, five new schools. Mm -hmm. And that would be the Plouffe, the Angelo, the Arnone, and the Baker and the George schools. Mm -hmm. So all elementary schools because of our large elementary population and our older buildings. Mm -hmm. But we need to be paying attention to the community needs. And right now we have to look at our facilities. Okay. You know, when we spoke at the city council meeting recently and I looked at Brockton High School and it got a chuckle. And I said, I don't want to hear anyone say the new Brockton High. Yeah. I understand that we had a Brockton High downtown. We opened that up in uh, 1970. Yeah. It's almost a 50-year-old school. I wasn't even born. Of course you weren't. <laughs> I was in high school. <laughs> and you know, it is time to pay attention to make sure our kids can be competitive, yeah. that they have you know, the coursework for STEM, that they have the technology, that this world about college and career, mm -hmm. that's the way we need to go. And as a community, we need to come together and say, this is our future, this is important. Mm -hmm. We certainly don't want our children not graduating. Mm -hmm. We don't want them not to be competitive with kids from all over the state. Mm -hmm. So that's the equity argument. Mm -hmm. Our parents can support that, our community can support that, because we all want the same thing for our mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. I mean. One of the things that I do know, I mean, although, like I said, I, I believe it was unfortunate I did not have an opportunity um, to go to Brockton High School due to the fact that when I came in this country, but I know that we have one of the best school system in the entire state, and through our students, we can see it. Um, and one of the things that I always see is that, I mean, when you come from Brockton High School, um, it, 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 it always makes you feel like you come from something big, and they take part of it. So. Um, I know you have this campaign, it's been going on for a while now, Brooklyn Kids Count. Mm -hmm. What can parents do to help you with this campaign in terms of like bringing, I know you've been doing a wonderful right. job in yep. terms of yep. reaching out to the yep. state, but what can parents I, do I need, And I need parents, out? Gene, on okay. board. Mm -hmm. I need parents, I, when I say parents, you could be the grandmother, you could be the aunt, the Every, uncle. Anybody. Right. First of all, you need to get involved. Mm -hmm. Do not, and especially if you think language is a barrier, mm -hmm. you mentioned your aunt. Mm -hmm. We have ways that we, uh, again, have translations for parents. Mm -hmm. We have people that speak many languages, mm -hmm. you know, throughout our school system. We could always improve, mm -hmm. and some of that is dependent on funding. Mm -hmm. But do not stay away. Get involved with the parent meetings. We have parent academies. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure you know your child's teacher. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're understanding. We're opening up, and we've been doing this for a couple of years now, mm -hmm. a parent portal. Mm -hmm. So if you have a youngster at the high school, mm -hmm. You need to get your password. Mm -hmm. That parent portal is going to tell you, is the student in school? Okay. You know, what are the grades that they're receiving? Interesting. And you might say to me, well, how does that help with funding? That helps because you are part of what we're doing to support your yeah. youngster. Yeah. They spend many more hours with you mm -hmm. than they certainly do with us in the schools, mm -hmm. although we're a big part of their social lives, mm -hmm. their academic lives, and their future. So I do believe that you know, parents can get involved in any way possible. 
whether if you are a parent from uh, another linguistic group, mm -hmm. Make sure you invite me. I recently was invited to the Seventh Day Adventist Church. And I missed that. I'm sorry I, about that. I was Casey Sermon, <laughs> who serves on the Diversity Task Force okay. with me. Mm -hmm. Casey is an educator in uh, Randolph. Okay. And uh, Cassie, I'm sorry, I'm saying Casey. It's yeah. Cassie Sermon. Yeah. And Cassie uh, said, Would you come and speak at the church? Mm -hmm. And it was a Saturday. It's interesting because they do services all day long, very different than my church. Yeah. And in the <laughs> evening, you know, they're able to have speakers in. Yeah. Um, and again, many people did not speak English. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say it wasn't a struggle because you can tell I talk very quickly yeah. and I had interpreters there, but I thought that was wonderful to be invited and to have that dialogue okay. so that people understand what they can do, mm -hmm. how we can come together as a mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and making sure we all believe that our children deserve the best that we can give them mm -hmm. and not be a poor community or we're an urban center. Yeah, we're a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. But you look at when our children compete on the stage, mm -hmm. they're number one in the state many yeah. times. Mm -hmm. You know, they're dedicated, and it doesn't take money to have talent and be good and practice and be dedicated. Mm -hmm. It takes people to support them mm -hmm. and to teach them, and they go out there and they are just stars. Look at the athletic fields. We don't always win. Mm -hmm. We won uh, a state uh, championship in soccer this yeah. year. We were so proud. It was our first state after championship. After so many years. After, we... I think it's the first one <laughs> since we've had soccer teams. Yeah, um, yeah. Our wrestling team, state champs. Mm -hmm. You know, so many awards. And academically, mm -hmm. we look at the number of students in our National Honor Society, national languages, you know, out there with international baccalaureate receiving mm -hmm. an international diploma along with a um, state, you know, school diploma. Mm -hmm. Our kids excel. They are determined. They want better lives for themselves. Mm -hmm. They want to be successful, and we need to come together any way that we can mm -hmm. to support our youngsters, and that includes everybody. That's good. I mean, thank you so much, you know, for not only for dedicated your time, but also your commitment um, to, I should say, to public service, obviously, because I said it to you one time. I think you choose to do this job not based on how much money you are going to get paid, but because you strongly believe in it. And of course, people can see it, not just now, but through, you know, your process in terms of like getting where you are. And I think for a place like Brockton, I mean, we do need someone like, like yourself who actually understand this system and has the connection mm -hmm. to actually reach out to different people where you can actually bring the resources that we need to serve our young folks in the city. And as you know, education truly defines my life because when I came in this country um, seven years ago, in a couple months, I could not speak the language. But fortunately, a place like Brockton opened the door for me. And I went to, you all really know the stories, I went to the Brockton um, Public Library um, right. to learn English as a second language, went to Massachusetts and yep. Suffolk University. But I think that um, I am not the only person who is doing it. We, are so, we have so many young people, whether they're from Haiti, Cape Verde, mm -hmm. um, anywhere in the world, who are doing the same things. But it, it is because people like you who strongly believe in bringing the resources that we need, where someone like myself and other young people out there can have the opportunity to learn. And I think we need somebody like yourself who has the ability and the capacity to advocate on our behalf to represent all of us. So for me, I think you know you are one of the best that we have in this city, yep. and, and I could not be more proud yep. of what you do. Well, I think for any of us, and I do appreciate you saying that, it, it always feels good to hear that you know, you're, you're certainly out there, and, and hopefully parents and community members, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean we always agree, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Yeah. You know, we can have that difficult dialogue mm -hmm. as long as we're all here for the right reasons mm -hmm. and in a positive vein. But the one thing I want to say um, is I do have a team behind me, and I know you know that. I have fabulous people that not only that I've worked with for 41 years, mm -hmm. but when I look at some of the young teachers coming up, you laugh when I say 22, <laughs> but we have 22-year-old teachers yeah. you know, that come on board, and I can tell right away. They don't have, have to have grown up in the Brockton mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. although we love mm -hmm. having our young people come back as teachers, as mm -hmm. coaches, mm -hmm. you know, being part of our educational system. Mm -hmm. you know, there are many jobs in the Brockton Public Schools and we are working hard to bring diversity to our students so our students see not only great teachers, but sometimes teachers that look like them, mm -hmm. teachers that speak like them mm -hmm. and have been successful. Mm -hmm. That's good for all our students. Mm -hmm. So behind a superintendent that is successful is certainly a, a mayor and a city council. Mm -hmm. I am so fortunate to have the school committee that I have behind me. Mm -hmm. And again, we have really difficult conversations sometimes mm -hmm. about some difficult decisions we have had to make. Mm -hmm. But it's respectful. It's professional, 
and we stand by each other to make sure that our kids have whatever they can have. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank all of our elected officials, our representatives that work so hard in the State House. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, I want to thank those teachers because I know what it takes to be a Brockton teacher. Mm -hmm. It is not a 9 to 2.30 or 3 o'clock job or whatever time our high school teachers start a little earlier, the, the old phrase 9 to 5 job. It is not that. It is a commitment to these students, mm -hmm. whether you're the coach, whether you're um, you know, working in the arts, mm -hmm. you know, whether you're working on stage, whether you're doing the debate club, whether you're just sponsoring a student council, mm -hmm. make those connections. And when I see the teachers that do that day in and day out, mm -hmm. this year we gave out what we called red apples. Mm -hmm. It was very hard to start the school year without 80 teachers that we had had the year before. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if I told you the story, but when they came on convocation day, which is the first day the teachers are back before the students come, mm -hmm. we had the auditorium filled with um, 80 yellow ribbons. And I did that all throughout the auditorium to signify that we were losing 80 teachers to start the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the only way that we were going to make it, we were going to do everything we could to advocate to get those teachers back for our students. Mm -hmm. But we also were going to help each other out. Every day we were going to walk in those doors and the principal was going to say to the teachers, what can I do to help you out today? Mm -hmm. And the teachers needed to say to the principals, what can we do to help you out today? Mm -hmm. And we got through that year and red apples were given to those people that went above and beyond. Mm -hmm. And I think people weren't sure what to make of it at first. And we mm -hmm. gave out over, I want to say close to 150 red apples last year mm -hmm. to teachers. And when I say red apples, I'm not talking the red apple that you eat. <laughs> it's a paperweight. Yeah. It, it's absolutely beautiful. It's marble. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very interesting to see the teachers come with their family members and their administration when they got this award, you know, from the superintendent and the school mm -hmm. committee. Mm -hmm. And it really does define the hard work our teachers do every single day. Beautiful. So, um, you know, it's been a wonderful conversation, and I think it will not be um, the last one. I mean, obviously, you are my second guest um, ever on this show, so I just got a signal, so we have three minutes left. So if you'd like to say anything to the parents or to some of the young folks that we have in the city, what would it be? I'll give you a, a minute to do that. I will tell you the line uh, that I use, and I'm not sure when I started to use it, but mm -hmm. I address kids all the time. Mm -hmm. It could be young children. You know, it, I'm passionate about young people. That's I, I, and I think that's a wonderful <laughs> thing. And, well, you know, everybody, I, I should say. I think we're at a point, uh, again, in our country where, and you saw what happened this year in Parkland, Florida. Mm. It's happened not just there, mm -hmm. but what happened there where our students said enough is enough mm -hmm. and there needs to be change. We need to have a voice. Mm -hmm. So I bring that up not to get in the middle of the political uh, dialogue going on mm -hmm. although if you know me I'm not quiet about the political dialogue <laughs> because people can't be quiet no and I'm out there listening to young people we cannot wait no longer we have to speak up young people yeah. are going to make a difference and I want to tell you the line I told you I use when I listen to them when I watch them in the State House advocating mm -hmm. for funding mm -hmm. when I watch them talking about making sure that we're providing them with what they need for mm -hmm. college career mm -hmm. for education for social opportunities, for all of those things, I tell them every time I see them, I am the proudest superintendent in this state. And I am so proud because of what you have done. Mm -hmm. So the hard work of your teachers, I speak on behalf of all of us in the Brockton community, mm -hmm. because what we have is just a gem mm -hmm. in our students. And, and I want to say, it isn't just Brockton High. Not everybody makes it at Brockton High. It's 4,200 students. Mm -hmm. We have probably seven uh, alternative pathways for mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. throughout the city, and uh, every student should receive that high school diploma, that credential, and there's no excuse not to. We support every one of you, and again, I am the proudest superintendent in the state. Interesting. Thank you so much, uh, Superintendent Kathleen Smith, for all the information that you're providing us, and although you have a very busy schedule, but you take the time for us. So, for those of you who are watching um, together with the Winning Court, I would like to thank you uh, for taking the time to watch this show. Like I said, my paramount goal with this show is to bring the information that I think is important to our population and educate myself and also you so we can have a better Brockton. And of course, we have our wonderful um, Superintendent Kathleen Smith here with us this evening, who is our second guest. And I hope you will come back to together with the Winning Court. It's so good to see you, and it's so Thank good you to very see you much. as well. Thank you.